Good morning. morning. We're going to stand and open up with Soul on Fire. Will you please join me now in the call to worship and prayer of the day, and this will be read responsibly. I will read the parts in light, and you will respond with what is in bold. Come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord. For the word of the Lord shall go forth. They shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. They shall sit every man under his vine and under his fig tree. For all the peoples walk in the name of their God. Good and gracious Father, Lord, we come here today and we lift up our hearts, our souls, our lives to you and ask us, Lord, that you give us that heart that is on fire, a heart on fire for your gospel, Lord, a heart on fire for your people, a heart on fire, Lord, to share your love and your message of grace and good news with all the world, Lord, with those who walk in darkness, with those who do not know the great depths of your love. And Father, as we gather in here today, we open these hearts and minds to you and pray that your Holy Spirit would fill us, Lord, that you would light us with that holy fire, that we would see, that we would hear, that we would understand, Lord, not only your good intentions towards us, Lord, but your goodness and your greatness and your holiness in our hearts. Father, help us to worship you today, Lord. Help us to be in our hearts and our songs and in our voices and in our thoughts that we can lift up a fitting praise and glory and honor to your name. 
Father, we thank you for this opportunity, for this day, and for all the gifts that you have given us. And all God's people said, Amen. We are going to remain standing and sing a beautiful, for spacious skies, hymn number 564. Please be seated. Good morning. It's great to see all of you here in the house of our God and King on this the day that the Lord has made. Let us truly rejoice and be glad in it. Now every day is a good day to come into the house of God and especially when our brothers and sisters in Christ are here with us. But this is an extra special day. You'll notice that the pyramids have been changed to red and some of you have remembered to wear your red today because today is the day we celebrate Pentecost. Pentecost Sunday is a very important Sunday. It is the day that we recognize as the beginning of the church. It was the day when the Holy Spirit was breathed upon the disciples. And receiving that Holy Spirit, we're truly able to go out as the sons and daughters of Jesus Christ, as his true disciples, and establish his church through which we are the heirs of today. And what we do here today, who we are today, and every single church can trace their line in, in a direct line all the way back to those disciples sitting in Jerusalem on the day of Pentecost. And we are blessed by them still today by what they have done and by the faith by which they believed. And this is the faith that we share with the world. I welcome all of you here today. I'm glad to see you every Sunday, especially this one. Um, if you're a visitor with us here today, everything you need to know to follow along with the service can be printed right here in the bulletin. 
Um, if you're watching us live or, or recorded a little bit later in the day or the week, everything you need to know to follow with, along with the service is going to appear on your screen at the correct time. So I've only got a few announcements for you today. We're getting into summer. Things are starting to slow down. I know you all are getting ready for vacations and everything, but there's still some stuff we got going on here at Cherokee. Um, youth is meeting tonight uh, here at 4 o'clock from 4 to 7. This is your youth hut party you're having. This is for all uh, middle and high school students. And uh, bring a friend. It's going to be a good time. These youth have worked really hard on getting this, uh, this hut ready. Um, the, the little hut we have out sitting up there. They finally ha take it as their own. And they have worked hard. They've painted it. They've decorated it. It looks great. I encourage you all to go out there and uh, maybe peek in the window and see the great things that they have done. So youth, you get to celebrate it tonight here at 4 o'clock. Bring a friend for your hut party. It's well earned. Um, also, i like to remind you, the Bible school is going to be happening. That's going to be June 10th. We still need some help signing up. There's a sign-up sheet out there in the hallway. And uh, we also, kids, anyone from, I believe it's fourth grade to rising sixth graders, 4K. Sorry, not fourth grade. I knew there was a four in there somewhere. That's as far as I got. 4K to rising sixth graders. Uh, you were invited to Bible school. It's going to be a water-themed Bible school this year. It's going to be really fun. I encourage you all to sign up. Now, I believe that is all the announcements that we have today. So two people I'd like to invite up. First, I'd like to invite the kids to come up and, uh, and sit right here on this front row. We've got a special treat for you today. And we're also going to invite our graduates to come forward and join Liz for our graduate recognition. Grant them a spirit that pursues you above all else, never lacking in their passion for you. God, may your spirit guide them as the next chapters of their lives unfold. Help them to enliven hope in the world and bring good, new, good things to your kingdom. Give, us strength to resist, give them strength to resist the temptations of greed, laziness, pride, and envy as they strive to do their best and to be their best. We ask all this in the name of Jesus, your beloved Son. Amen. 
kids, we invited you to come up here to witness this because before you know it, this is going to be you. It happens in a blink of an eye. Um, so enjoy these years and just work really hard. And we can't wait to celebrate you when it comes to be your time as well. Leah and Thomas, may you have wisdom in heart and mind, success in every challenge you find, courage to seek God's purpose for you, strength to do your best and to endure, and the guiding light of faith to ensure that wherever you go, whatever you do, God's love will always see you through. And we hope that you remember that we are always here for you, no matter what happens, we're your church family forever. All right, congratulations. And kids, you can go to Children's Church with Maggie and Megan. Yes, ma'am. All right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Sorry, we missed one. We missed one. There was another grudge. Now, my friends, if we say that we have no sin, that we deceive ourselves. We deceive ourselves, the truth is not in us, and we even make God to be a liar. But if we come and we confess our sins, and we lay our heart before the throne of God, our God shows himself to be not only just, but merciful, and forgives us for all of our sins. So friends, let us come and confess together, first in quiet reflection in our hearts, and to God alone, and then together as it's printed in the bulletin. Let us pray. now together. Almighty and merciful God, we have erred and strayed from your ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against your holy laws. We have left undone those things we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done. O oh Lord, have mercy upon us. Spare those who confess their faults. Restore those who are penitent according to your promises declared to the world in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O oh merciful God, for his sake that we may live a holy, just, and humble life to the glory of your holy name. In the name of Christ Jesus we pray. Amen. Friends, hear the good news. Who is in a position to condemn? Only Christ. And Christ died for us. Christ rose for us. Christ reigns in power for us. Christ prays for us. I declare to you in the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Thanks be to God. We are now going to stand and sing Jesus paid it all.
Please be seated. Our scripture passage today comes from the gospel according to Matthew. We're looking at chapter 14. We're going to skip around a little bit, doing verse 1 to 11 and then 14 to 16. Uh, before we do this, let's pause for a moment in prayer. Good and gracious Father, Lord, you have given us everything that we need for a fruitful and good and holy life. And you have given us your word, Lord, the word that indwells in our hearts, the word proclaimed in the good news of the gospel. And this word, Lord, written here, inspired by your Holy Spirit, written down faithfully by your prophets and apostles, and then passed down to us today. But Father, as we read these words, we know we can understand none of these things unless that same Spirit that inspired them would inspire us again. So we ask, Lord, again, to breathe that Spirit upon us, that we may hear, that we may see, that we may read, that we may understand your good and perfect will for us. Lord, bless this holy reading of your holy word. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable to you, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. This is the gospel according to Matthew, chapter 13, verses 1 to 11 and 14 to 16. Listen now to the word of the Lord. That same day Jesus went out of the house and sat beside the sea. And great crowds gathered about him, so that he got into a boat and sat down. And the whole crowd stood on the beach. And he told them many things in parables, saying, A sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, some seeds fell along the path, and the birds came and devoured them. Other seeds fell on rocky ground where they did not have much soil, and immediately they sprang up, since they had no depth of soil, but when the sun rose, they were scorched. And since they had no root, they withered away. Other seeds fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked them. Other seeds fell on good soil and produced grain. Some are hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. He who has, has ears, let him hear. Then the disciples came to him and said, Why do you speak to them in parables? And he answered them, To you it has been given to know the secrets of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it has not been given. Indeed, in their case, the prophecy of Isaiah is fulfilled that says, You will indeed hear, but never understand, and you will indeed see, but never perceive, for this people's heart has grown dull, and with their ears they can barely hear, and with their eyes they have closed, lest they should see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and understand with their heart, and turn, and I would heal them. But blessed are your eyes, for they see, and your ears for they hear. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So do you all remember, I'd say maybe about 20, 30 years ago, there was a big phase with the 3D art you remember those? It was a computer-generated 3D art, and if you looked at it in just the right way, you could see this, uh, this 3D image pop out right out of the picture. It was really neat. It was really cool. Uh, some of y'all might not remember. It happened, it got real popular in the 90s, I think, when it came out. I was working at a bookstore at the time, and we got all these books and posters all about this 3D art. And, and if I haven't seen it, th this 3D art, like I said, is a picture or poster, and when you look at it, it looks like static. Like, that's all you see is, like, static. It, orange and red and blue or green, and it's, and it's static all over the page. But there was this trick to it. You were supposed to do something with your eyes. You had to hold your eyes just right. And if you did that, this 3D picture would pop out the page. I mean, it really is cool. It really did work. You had to, like I said, you had to do something right with your eyes. People kept saying, oh, you got to relax your eyes. But, but that never worked for me. I was just like, ah. Uh. How I can't relax them anymore, and I would just get sleepy. But the trick I, that worked for me is they said you had to focus behind the picture. Don't focus on the picture. You had to focus behind the picture. And if you did that, all of a sudden this picture that looked like static turned into a marvel. There would be clouds or ships 
or, or a castle and it was it was like really like jumping out of the page it was the coolest thing to see unless you couldn't see it and then it was very frustrating because you're looking and you're like i can't see it they're like oh yeah i see a cloud there's a plant a tree and they're like where where i don't see a cloud where's the cloud there's a seinfeld episode about that you should check it out on netflix it's the one where elaine is working for mr pitts okay you'll know what i'm talking about if you know seinfeld it can be but it can be very frustrating because other people are seeing it and all you see is static and it was the strangest thing because when two people could look at this picture two of them staring at exactly the same picture one person is seeing a marvel a, a 3d castle and a ship and a sun and, and a clouds and the landscape but the other person looking at the exact same picture and all they saw was static see there's a good analogy here it's a really good metaphor for life okay and the metaphor is the message there is you can look and still not see you can look yet you still cannot see there's sometimes in life where we're not just looking right and if you don't look right, then all you're going to see out of life is static. You're going to look around and see it's just a bunch of people and things bumping around and moving around. But if you focus right, if you focus your eyes just right, you can see something that is truly marvelous. And that's what Jesus has promised us here. That's what he promises here in, here in the story. If you focus your eyes right, you focus your ears right, your heart in the right place, and I will show you something wonderful. And what he's promised to show us is the secrets of the kingdom of heaven. Focus your eyes right, Jesus says. Focus your heart right on me, and I will show you the secrets of the kingdom of heaven. And, and he begins this lesson here with the parable as he does so many times. And you may have heard it. It's the parable of the, call it the seed for the sower. And he, he says he gathered at the edge of the sea and this huge crowd came out to see him. He says there were so many people they had no room and he had to get up out on a boat and they pushed him out into the water a few feet and everyone gathered and pressed along to the beach to hear these words of wisdom that Jesus would tell them. And this is what he told them. There was once a man who had a bag of seed, and he went out sowing it along the ground. He said, some, some seed fell along a path, and birds came, and they snatched it up. He said, some seed fell among rocks, and, and it had thin soil, and it grew up real quick, but, but because the soil was thin, as soon as the sun came out, it scorched, and it died. He said, some seed fell among thorns, and it started to grow up, but because of all the weeds and thorns around, it got choked away, and that died too. But some seed, it fell on good ground, and it multiplied a hundredfold, 60, 30. And that's your lesson for the day. And that was it. That was it. That's what he told them. That was the lesson. He told them, and, and, and everybody was confused. The disciples were confused. They're like, wait a minute. What are you talking about? These guys are farmers. They, they, they know how to throw seed out. Like, why, Jesus, are you talking to us in parables? Why can't you just be straight? Just tell us straight what it is. Why are these stories and these metaphors? And, you know, he, he answered in an amazing way, amazing answer he gave them. You know what he said? He said, I speak in parables so they won't understand me. That's right. You heard it right. I speak in parables, Jesus said, so people won't understand me. I don't want them to understand. I want them to be confused. He says it right there, verse 11. What do he tell them? He says, to you, my disciples, to you has been given the secret of the kingdom of heaven. He says, but to them, to them it's not been given. I've kept it from them, and in fact, I've hid it from them deliberately. I've done it so much, I've done it to fulfill a prophecy. In Isaiah, it said that they will see, but they will not perceive. They will hear, but they will never understand. And it's because their hearts have gone dull that they can see and not perceive, that they can hear and they cannot understand. And so he speaks in parables. He says, I will speak in parables now, so this will keep going. So this prophecy will be fulfilled. 
people will see and not perceive, that they'll hear me, but they're not going to understand what I say. Some people, some people, we, we, they walk in the same world with us, side by side. They'll see what we see, hear what we see, hear the same gospel preached that we have heard preached, hear the same words that Jesus spoke that we hear. Some will see static, and others see something truly marvelous. Now, this can be confusing. It can be confusing, to say the least, because it doesn't sound like the Jesus we know. I mean, why would Jesus want to hide things from people? I mean, just last week, we, we talked about how his, his arms are wide open. Anybody who would profess him as Lord and Savior can come, and Jesus will acknowledge him before his Father in heaven. So why does it look like that Jesus is shutting some people out here? Before I answer that, I want to point out how right Jesus is, though. I want to just point out to you and show you how right Jesus is about some people can hear and they understand immediately and they understand their whole life and some people can hear the exact same thing, but they can't get it. And no matter what it seems, they can't get it. Now, when he gathers with his disciples, he explains this parable to them. He explains it in depth because even the disciples, they didn't get what he was talking about. And Jesus says, okay, this is what this parable means. The seed that's being thrown out, that is the word of God. That is the promise of the gospel, and it's being thrown out. Now, those that it fell upon rocky path, those are the people that hear the word, says, but they don't understand it. And the birds are, 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 is Satan coming to snatch the word out of their heart so it never has a chance to take root. He says, though, but the seed that fell on rocky ground, that's people who receive the word with joy. They actually receive it, and they take it in, and it starts to grow in them. But it says the soil is thin, and as soon as the sun comes out, which means tribulation and hardship and trials in life, as soon as that happens, they give it up because their roots aren't deep enough. It says, and then the, the, the seed thrown on the thorns, that's also people who receive the word of God, who hear it, and they try to take it in, but the thorns are all the cares and worries of life. Things like, uh, all, I guess, all the business we have to do, the temptations, the desires of the heart, the greed that we have. And it says all these desires and all these temptations, they choke it out. And so the word never produces fruit in their heart. There's only one group that hears the gospel and keeps it. And Jesus calls them good soil. And what distinguishes the good soil from the bad is it says that they will hear and they understand. They understand. Something clicks in them. Something clicks in them and their eyes are open and their ears truly hear. And, and they understand not just on a surface way, they understand all the way to the depth of their soul and this understanding stays with them and it allows them to go through all the hard times, all the tribulations, all the temptations that life throws at them. And that's what makes them good soil. Is they hear and they understand. Not just with the mind. They understand with the heart. That allows Christ to dwell in them. And I got to say, this, this really is true. I mean, it really is. I mean, the more I live, the more I explore, the more I engage with people, there are some that get it, and there are some that don't. And it doesn't matter what I say or what I do. I cannot make other people get the simple truth about Christ as Lord. We can live in the same world. We can experience the same life. We can hear the same gospel and the same words of Jesus. But all they hear is static. All they see is static and they can't see the marvel that Christ has laid before their eyes. And you know, smarts don't matter. Smarts don't matter. I've, I've known people, that there's some really, really good minds out there that can't seem to get the truth about Christ. There's some, there's some great minds out there. Some really smart people that don't seem to get it. It's like a mental block or, or, or maybe a refusal to see what Christ is speaking to them. I mean, it's exactly like Jesus said. They have eyes, but they can't see. They have ears, but they can't hear. 
And we're both looking at the same picture. We're both looking at the same gospel that's been given to us. And some of us can see the kingdom of heaven. Some of us just static. If you've ever tried to argue with an atheist, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. It can be very difficult. And at some point, you can even argue them to a place where they've got no good answer for you, but they still just refuse to give in. I was at a conference once. And there was, a, there was an atheist there, and I'd gotten into a lot of discussions and conversations with him. And, and his point, he kept saying, I don't believe in God because I'm going to follow the evidence. It's got to be evidence to me. Evidence, evidence. He kept talking about all this evidence. And finally I said, well, what about the evidence for the resurrection? He said, well, what evidence is there? I said, if you look at every historical record, eyewitness reports from the time of Jesus, they all say the same thing. That there was an empty tomb and Jesus appeared to them risen after he died. That's the historical evidence. He says, oh, well, no, no, no. I, I believe that the disciples stole the body. So I said, well, where's your evidence for that? Do you have a single eyewitness historical record that says that the disciples stole the body? No. Well, where's your evidence? He said, yeah, I, I, I don't know. I, I still don't believe. And so I got frustrated with him. I finally said, what is it going to take you to believe? What kind of evidence would I give you that you would believe? And he finally gave me an honest answer. He said, I don't know. I just don't believe. He just wouldn't get it. There's a story even more amazing than that. I had read this from a, uh, it, was a it was a collection of what they called deconversion stories. It was people that were telling the story of how they converted away from faith. They weren't conversion stories going from unbelief to faith. They were deconversion stories. They were going from belief into unbelief. And this one girl, this were her own words, okay, her own words. She said she was very young and she was struggling with the idea of faith. And she was having a hard time believing. And she was alone at her parents' house one night. And she was in a living room that had this big window. It was night and there was a terrible storm going on outside. And she was very frightened. And so she sat, she got on her knees in front of that window. And she said, God, if you're real, if you're real, just give me a sign that you're real. Now, this is her own testimony, okay? As soon as she prayed that, she said lightning struck her front yard right in front of the window twice. It's like, bam, bam, right there, shook the whole house. Two bolts of lightning right in front of her. You know what she did? She said she got up off her knees and said, you know what? I still don't believe. I still don't believe. Some people, they have eyes, but they won't see. They have ears, but they won't understand. Now, you might be asking yourself, is it really their fault? I mean, because Jesus said right here, I'm speaking in parables so people don't understand me. I mean, does that mean Jesus is keeping the gospel, the secrets of the kingdom that could, could draw some of these people into conversion and into faith? He's keeping it away from them? Well, like a, a good pastor, I'm going to give you the answer is yes and no. But no, no, it's a good one. Listen to me, okay? The key to understanding how this is both yes and no, and how Jesus keeps it from them, but it doesn't keep them from it. The key to understanding it is what we're celebrating here today. Remember, today is the day of Pentecost. And what are we celebrating here? You remember? The start of the church, the gift of the Holy Spirit. Yes, the gift of the Holy Spirit. The disciples gathered together in Jerusalem. This is after Jesus had ascended into heaven. They were gathered together, and the Holy Spirit came upon them in a mighty wind. Remember, tongues of fire appeared over their head. And for the first time, the disciples really understood what was happening. For the first time, they got it. and Because the Holy Spirit taught them, and it told them all these things in their mind that was blind before, and their ears that were stopped that before. They were like, oh, yeah. Now it makes sense. But you see, it wasn't their mind that understood it. It was the Holy Spirit. It wasn't their effort and power that was able to understand it. It was the Holy Spirit and the truth about Christ. 
about his identity, about redemption, about eternal life, about even our state as sinners and our need for grace and the truth that only Christ can give us this. These are the secrets of the kingdom of heaven and they're hidden secrets because they can only be understood through the gift of the Holy Spirit. And these secrets of the kingdom cannot be understood apart from the Holy Spirit. So that means anybody who tries to approach this to understand with their own mind, it's going to remain a secret. Anyone who tries to grasp these things with their own understanding, their own intelligence, their own wisdom, all they're ever going to see in this life when they look at the gospel is static. It's kept a secret specifically. So we cannot understand these things without the help of God. It's kept a secret specifically so we understand that we know that we can't do it alone. It can't be by our power. It can't be by our wisdom. It's not by our understanding. We didn't figure out ourselves. It is a truth that is revealed, not figured out. It is a grace that's given, not a grace that's earned. So who gets the secret? And who remains confused? I'll tell you, anyone who will allow God to reign in his life will see the secrets of the kingdom of heaven. Anyone who is able to let go and willing to let go and let God's will be in our will will understand these secrets of the kingdom of heaven. Anyone who's able to let go of our understanding, of our need to know, of our need for or our demand that God prove himself to us and reveal himself to us on our terms, if we can let go on that and lean upon his wisdom, he will show these secrets to us. Anyone who could just relax their eyes, let the Spirit focus for you, and you will see. And what Jesus said to his disciples and what I think he would say to you if he were standing here right now, is he would say, blessed are your eyes for they see. And blessed are your ears for they hear. Now, I don't want anyone to get worried and think that, well, I, there's a lot I don't understand. Does that mean it's being kept hidden from me? Well, that's not what Jesus means here. There's a lot that you're not going to understand, but to you has been given the secrets of the kingdom of heaven. I'm talking about the secret to know your need for Jesus Christ. The secret to know yourself as a sinner and that you need Christ to save you. I'm talking about the secret of your utter and absolute dependence on Christ from today until the day you die. I'm talking about the secret that only Jesus Christ can supply all of the deepest needs that you have in life. Now, it might not seem like a secret. You're like, everybody knows that. Come on. What kind of secret is that? That's no secret at all. It's not true. It's not true. It is a secret. Because there are many that have heard this same message, and they don't see it. Their eyes can't see, and their ears cannot hear. But to you has been given the secret of the kingdom of heaven. It's a neat trick, really, being able to see this secret of the kingdom of heaven. Because no matter how hard you think, no matter how hard you try to make yourself see, all you'll ever see is static. You have to relax, not just your eyes, but your mind and your heart. You've got to give up this illusion of control and this illusion of understanding that we adore so much. You've got to let go and allow the Holy Spirit to reign in you. You have to allow the Spirit of God who sees all and knows all to enter into your heart and to enter into your understanding. And only when you see through His eyes Will you not only behold the secrets of the kingdom, you will begin to see the wonder and the miracle that is life. And friends, that is truly a marvel to behold. To God be all the glory forever and ever. Amen.
Friends, will you pray with me? Good and heavenly Father, uh, we come to you as children sometimes whose eyes are blinded, whose ears are stopped up. Lord, who looks so much at the things that this world has to offer and to hear so much the temptations all around us, Lord, that we fail to see the secrets that you have given us of your kingdom. Father, bless our eyes that we can see, Lord. Bless our ears that we can hear. Bless our hearts, Lord, that we would understand the grace that you have given us. That we would understand, Lord, the opportunity that you have given us and let us understand, Lord, this is not our effort, but it's yours. This is your gift to us. Grant us, Lord, open hearts that we receive this gift that we would know, that we would treasure the secret of the kingdom that you have made ours. But more than that, Lord, may we not keep this a secret. May we share it with all. May we share it with all and go in the power of the Holy Spirit that all who hear would be moved as we have been moved and that they would see, that they would hear, and that all the world would understand and know you as Lord. In Christ Jesus we pray. Amen. Friends, hear this secret of the kingdom of heaven. At the fullness of time, Christ will return again. And he will gather the elect from every time, from every place, from every nation, from every race, from every age upon the earth. And we will come and we will gather together for the bridal celebration of God. Until then, we wait for our Savior to return. We proclaim His death and resurrection until He comes to us again. We gather here at this table and we proclaim His death until the day arrives and we can celebrate with Him in person. This table here is the table for all that are in Christ Jesus. Everyone who has accepted Christ as his Lord and Savior is invited to partake with us at this table here today. Here at Cherokee, and the time comes, we will release you by rows, and we ask that you move around from this side. And here you can take the cups that have bread in them. And over here are the cups with either juice or wine. The uh, light-colored liquid is juice, and the darker is wine. You can pick which one that you would like to celebrate with. And we ask that you then return to your seats and hold on to these elements, and we will take them together. Let us pray. Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, King of the universe. Father, we gather here today at your table with thanksgiving, and we thank you for this gift that you have given us today, Lord, the broken body of your Son, the shed blood of our Savior. I pray, Lord, that today as we take and eat, that we would be redeemed, that we would be cleansed, and that our heart would be made right with you again. And Father, we come to you today in faith and lift up to you the prayers of a people, Lord, that need your grace and mercy now more than ever. We promise, Lord, that you would fill our hearts with the promise and the hope of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. We pray, Lord, that you would fill our lives with the love that pours down from you into our hearts. We pray, Lord, that you would fill us with the faith that can understand all things. Father, we pray that you give us eyes that see and ears that hear and hearts that truly understand. Father, we pray for the fullness and the fulfillment of the gospel upon this world, upon our community, upon our nation. Father, we pray that you would guide our leaders in wisdom. You would guide them in hope. Father, pray that you would shepherd our families and our children and ourselves in peace and goodness and prosperity. Father, we pray that we would depend and know and realize that all good gifts come only through your hand. Father, we lift up to you today the people who need your help. We lift up to you for those who need healing today, Lord. Father, we pray for Lee and for Kay and for Shana and for Joe and for Alvia and for Pat. And pray, Father, that you would grant them healing in body, soul, and spirit. We pray, Lord, for all those that have been injured in the bus crash from Gilbert High School. 
And we pray, Father, that you would heal them not only in body but in mind as well. Father, we lift up to you in prayer all those who suffer from depression. And for those, Lord, that are seeking a way of light in the darkness that surrounds them. And I pray specifically today for serenity, Lord, and that you would bless her heart and guide her in peace and hope. Father, today we take a moment and remember all those who have died protecting our nation. We pray for those, Lord, and thank you for those who are willing to lay down the greatest sacrifice of all and give the full measure of their devotion that we might live in a nation of freedom, that we might live in a nation of liberty, that we might live in a nation here, Lord, where we can freely gather and worship your name and then freely go forth and proclaim it again. Father, we pray for a, a peace upon the hearts who grieve, those who have lost family members and loved ones in our nation's wars. And we pray that you strengthen our soldiers, Lord, and give them the resolve to continue to defend us until that day comes when we can beat our swords into plowshares and our spears into pruning hooks, and we have to study war no more. Until that day comes, Lord, strengthen us with your Holy Spirit. Father, I pray that you would bless these elements that we are about to receive. Father, fill them with your Holy Spirit. They may, may they be visible signs of your invisible grace. And as we take, we may eat and be transformed. Father, we lift up all these prayers in the name of your Son, our Savior, who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. On the night that Jesus was betrayed, he gathered with his disciples, and after taking bread, he blessed it. He broke it. He said, this is my body, broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way, he took the cup. And he said, this is the cup of the covenant poured out in my blood. Do this in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat of this bread and drink of this cup, you proclaim the death of the Lord until he comes again. Friends, these are the gifts of God for the people of God. Come, the table is set. Friends, this is the body of Christ broken for you. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. Let us stand and sing together our response of thanksgiving. Let us pray. Good and heavenly Father, we come and we receive this gift that you have given us, Lord, with gladness and with gratitude. Father, may the blood and the, and the body of Jesus Christ continue to live into us and continue to transform our days until we become the men and women that you have made us to be. And may your glory go throughout all the world until your Son returns to us again. In Christ Jesus we pray. Amen. And now we're going to continue standing, saying it is what it is you believe, using the words of the Apostles' Creed. Friends, what is it you believe? I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, 
born on the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We are going to remain standing and sing hymn number 324, Open My Eyes That I May See. Go now, friends, with the eyes that see and the ears that hear, and behold the secrets of the kingdom of heaven. And now may the Lord bless thee and keep thee. May the Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious to thee. May the Lord lift his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.